Hi, I'm Bob Swirsel. I'm going to take you on a history ride around the north half of Beacon Hill in Seattle, Washington. There are nine stops on the ride, and you should pay attention because there may be a quiz. Enjoy the ride. Beacon Hill is a ridge running north-south between the Duwamish Valley and Rainier Valley in Seattle. The hill was known as Quatsich, or greenish-yellow spine, by the Duwamish people, who have been living in this region for thousands of years. Tautalkas, a former Duwamish village made of five medium-sized cedar longhouses, once stood at the current intersection of Airport Way and Spokane Street. After the Donation Claims Act was passed in 1850, white settlers staked claims to the land for themselves. The first to claim land on Beacon Hill was Henry Van Asselt in 1851. Following the 1855 Treaty of Point Elliot, indigenous people were mostly forced out of the area and onto federal reservations. During the 20th century, due to policies including redlining, racial covenants, restrictive land ownership laws, and general racism, Beacon Hill was one of few places in Seattle where people who were not considered white were able to live, and it remains one of the city's most diverse neighborhoods. Buried under modern Jefferson Park are two historic reservoirs. In the 1890s, the city of Seattle was looking for a new source of water and decided to build a series of pipelines from the Cedar River to reservoirs on Capitol Hill. You'll learn why they did this at our third stop. They built the first pipeline in 1901 and added a second one in 1909. The pipelines ran through Beacon Hill and straightened an existing road that became Beacon Avenue. In 1911, Two reservoirs were built at Jefferson Park, holding 61 million gallons and 49 million gallons of water. In 2008 to 2009, the North Reservoir was filled in, and the South Reservoir was covered and remains in use. This gatehouse is one of the only above-ground remnants of the reservoirs. From the corner of 12th and Hanford, you can see a large chunk of the hill is missing, and it's not because of nature. Eugene Semple, former territorial governor of Washington Territory, wanted to build a south canal to connect Puget Sound with Lake Washington by cutting east-west through Beacon Hill. In 1895, workers started to dig a canal east from the Duwamish River along Hanford Street. This was 16 years before construction started on the Lake Washington Ship Canal. The crew reached Beacon Hill in 1901, but after multiple complaints and lawsuits, the Seattle City Council eventually stopped the project in 1904. The gap in Beacon Hill is now used for Columbian Way's access to and from Interstate 5. The Spring Hill Water Company supplied water to Seattle's business district and residential areas in the 1880s. They built a pumping station at Lake Washington and connected it along Holgate Street to a reservoir here on Beacon Hill. At Coleman Park, you can see remnants of the lake water intake pipes. During the Great Seattle Fire on June 6, 1889, the reservoir couldn't supply the fire department with enough water to put out the flames, and about 120 acres, or about 25 city blocks, of downtown Seattle were destroyed. A month later, voters approved the establishment of a city-owned water system to draw water from the Cedar River. Uh -huh. 
Harwood Young was a developer from New England who built a house near present-day Pacific Medical Center. In 1891, he built a streetcar line into the neighborhood, renamed the area after the Beacon Hill neighborhood in Boston, and renamed his street Massachusetts. U.S. Marine Hospital was built in 1932 as a facility to take care of ill and disabled seamen from the Merchant Marines, Lighthouse Service, Coast Guard, and more. Here in 1963, Dr. Donald Thomas started groundbreaking research and clinical trials that ultimately led to the world's first bone marrow transplant. He was awarded the Nobel Prize. Across the street is our next stop. Dr. Jose Pertazio Rizal Mercado y Realanda was a Filipino nationalist in the 19th century when the Philippines was ruled by Spain. He wrote influential novels about the atrocities and corruption of the Spanish administration and clergy, and he formed La Liga Filipina, a political reform group to promote self-governance. He was accused of associating with the revolutionary Katipunan, then jailed and executed. Dr. Jose Rizal is considered the national hero of the Philippines, and after efforts by the Filipino Alumni Association and Filipino American community, the Viewpoint Park and adjacent bridge were dedicated and named for him in 1974. In 2012, monuments were added for Filipino soldiers who fought in Bataan and Corregidor during World War II. This is the former Beacon Hill School, built in 1904. In 1972, the school was set to be torn down, and the community was about to lose its valuable resource. Roberto Maestas, a teacher who had helped to found an ESL program for adults using the school, organized Chicano activists to save the building. On October 11, 1972, they occupied the building and operated it as a community center while also protesting at City Hall, including in the mayor's office. Three months later, they reached a deal, and El Centro de la Raza, or the Center for the People of All Races, was eventually able to purchase the building. El Centro de la Raza continues to serve as a community resource. George Putnam Riley was a free black man and abolitionist from Boston who moved to the West Coast in the 1860s. He formed the Working Men's Joint Stock Association of Portland with 14 mostly black men and women. In 1869, Riley purchased half of the Hanford donation claim in Seattle. Officially known as Riley's addition to South Seattle, the land covered four blocks in Beacon Hill, bordered by Forest and Lander Streets, and 19th and 21st Avenues. George's longest-lasting impact would be in nearby Tacoma, where he purchased 67 acres of land and became Tacoma's first black resident. The Alliance Edition became home to Tacoma's African-American community, and is now known as the Hilltop neighborhood. The Beacon Food Forest originated as a final project for a permaculture design course. 
In 2009, four students studying food forestry selected the western slope of Jefferson Park and created a dream design that they presented to the community. The dream became a reality as the first 1.75 acres were constructed in late 2013 and another 1.75 acres were added in 2018. Beacon Food Forest is the largest public food forest in the country and it contains pea patch plots, gathering plaza, food bank gardens, beekeeping area, and harvesting areas that are open year-round to anyone. The site is maintained through the efforts of 15 core volunteers and 50 regular volunteers. Our last stop on this history ride is the Chief South Trail. For years, residents had been asking for a trail along the Seattle City Light Utilities Corridor. The trail was built using materials generated from construction of the Link Light Rail, including recycled soils and crushed concrete excavated along MLK Way in the Rainier Valley. The Chief South Trail opened in May 2007 and was extended to 3.6 miles in length in January 2011. That's all of the stops on this history ride. Were you paying attention? Let's find out with the pop quiz. You can pause the video if you need more time to think of your answers. Question 1. Who is the national hero of the Philippines? The answer is Dr. Jose Rizal. Question 2. What started as the final project for a permaculture design course? The answer is Beacon Food Forest. Question 3. Who saved the Beacon Hill School? The answer is Chicano activists led by Roberto Maestas. Did you get all three answers? If yes, then you're pretty awesome. If you didn't, you can always rewatch the video. We finish at the Jefferson Park Community Center. Thank you for joining me on this history ride. These topics go much deeper, so I encourage you to read and learn more about them on your own. If you want to see more of my work, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. See you next time!